us look at Matthew 11. And we'll start here next Sunday night, Lord willing, and we'll continue this study. Jesus came to his disciples. They'd ask him, Lord, teach us to pray. And he starts off on something that had never been done before. And as he began in Luke 11, as he began, I don't know where I told you this, in Luke 11, as Jesus began to teach them, he starts off on something that nobody had ever commanded. Pray our Father. What Jesus taught, you couldn't get from searching the scriptures. What Jesus taught, no one else had ever taught. For Jesus now was thinking beyond his death at Calvary and after the establishment of the church to teach the disciples to whom they were to pray when they offered up their prayers. No one else was to be prayed to. Our Father. He was asking and telling that they prayed to him. For in John 16, 23, Jesus said, In that day you'll ask me nothing. For whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, it will be given to you. Now, if you look at the prayers of Abraham and the prayers of Daniel and the prayers of David, it would always be, O oh Lord, our God. They didn't pray, O oh Lord, our Father. And in Romans, the 8th chapter and the 15th verse, we are told that we can come to the presence of God and cry, Abba, Father. This is a new relationship that is going to be established by the blood of Jesus Christ that nobody else before had had the opportunity to have established. See, God becomes our Father by the blood of Jesus Christ and His authority. Jesus was precluding his death in Calvary. He was looking beyond his ascension to God the Father and the acceptance of his blood. He was not at all concerned about these events not taking place. And so when Jesus prayed to God, he was praying to him in a manner that now we who will become children of God by obedience to his law, can enter our prayer. Our Father. Now, frankly, there's a lot of people that think it's not much of a big deal to pray to God the Father because they want to pray to everybody else. But do you imagine that of all the ancients in the Old Testament, of all the righteous, of all the obedient, of all those who existed, we have an opportunity and a privilege to do what they never had the invitation to accommodate when they prayed they couldn't pray to God the Father because there was sin that was always between them and God and the Bible teaches sin will separate you from God he'll not hear your prayer and so Jesus begins by breaking a pattern that had been established by all the ancients of the Old Testament and were and was teaching us now because of his blood that was shed and his high priesthood that he would be involved in, that we can pray to God and go directly to him as our Father. Or, as it is said in Romans 8 and 15, or in Galatians 4 and 6, we can cry unto him, Abba, Father. Now this word Abba is the word which means kind, affectionate parent. I was in Jacksonville one time and I told you this, but there was a brother there whom they called on to pray. This brother was about 94 to 95 years old. I didn't know it, so, you know, just walking in to preach for the first night during the meeting. You can imagine when they called on this old saint of God to pray and everybody bowed his head, he started his prayer. Dear, kind, and affectionate parent. I thought, boy, this is different. This is going to be an interesting meeting. For the first time, I've heard somebody define the word Abba in its true concept. And your children, Paul said, and we can cry, Abba, Father. And in Galatians 4, and because you are sons of God, 
you can cry. Abba, Father. Now, I'm not telling you that that's just the way you should change your address to God before you pray, but I am telling you that is absolutely scriptural. And this old brother led a beautiful prayer. And you could tell he'd been there many times. And he was at ease with him whom he prayed to and expressed it in an eloquent, beautiful fashion. And anybody that leads a public prayer is not trying to impress but one being. And that's him to whom he prays. So we've begun this discussion, and I want to continue it. And this is going to take us three or four Sunday nights. And, of course, we'll break into everything else we're supposed to in that period of time. But kind of keep these thoughts together. Because we've been given a privilege that nobody in any dispensation at any time previous to Christianity has ever been allowed to participate in. We can go directly to God, the Father when we pray. Not because we're good enough, but because of him who is our high priest who covers us with his blood and takes us into the presence of God. If you're here